gentlemen, how's everybody doing tonight? Welcome to Comedy Night S7, produced by Team Us Comedy. Everybody give them a round of applause. All right, guys, I am Mohammed Rahil Rafiq. I am the owner of Seven Bar and Restaurant. I'm not your host. I'm not a comedian. I'm just here to give you a five-minute lecture. Please, please, we ask you guys, please turn your cell phones to vibrate or silent. Please keep the table talk to a little, very, no one even do it. That's how, that's how much we want to hear it. And also, if you guys are sitting in the back, come on up front, sit up front with the comedians and the singers. We're going to have a great show tonight. So let's not waste so much time. I know you guys already hate seeing me up here. Let's bring your host up tonight, Danny. Everybody give him a round of applause. Guys, keep it going for Raheel. We're going to be running lights for us tonight. Uh, so if everyone wants to come, sit up front. We're going to fill this out. Uh, if you haven't got a drink ticket yet, make sure you come up here and you get your free toast drink ticket. So we have them right up here. If you don't have one, Basha has some. She'll give you one. Uh, to get us started tonight, we have a great lineup of comedians. But first, we're going to kick it off with some music. Are you guys excited? We have a special guest tonight. His name is Debonair Status. He's going to be playing some new music off of his upcoming EP, Mountaintop. Give him a round All of applause. I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money yeah. on my mind, I can never get it right. up. We never be a talent through the reason. Everybody hands go up. Hey. What up, y'all? Hey, what up, Spike? What's up, dog? <laughs> uh, we just going to do some music for y'all asses right quick. Uh, holla at your boy. We're going to get lit. <laughs> I don't take anything seriously. All right, let's do it. <laughs> This song is, uh, shit, what is this song? Oh, this song is called White Blazer, but there's, <laughs> there's another part in it, so we're gonna get to it when we get to it. Now. Hey. Can we turn up a little bit louder? We can. Coke White Blazer, that is what I like. Coke White Blazer, I'll be high all night. Coke white blazer, that is what What's I it? need. Coke white blazer, perfect fit on me. These haters I, and that's a problem. These haters eyes, you know I got them. Ain't mad I never ever ever thought to talk them. Why would I ever 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 think to bother? I know that I look good and I know you can tell. Got stamp self-approval, put me in the mail. My fit's a fucking nerd, I swear it never fails. Try to match me, nigga, you cannot compare. Woo! Coke white, coke white, coke white, coke white, coke white, coke white. Whatever I do, I get attention on sight. Looking like I should be up in my air, me vice. Coke white, coke white, coke white, coke white, coke white, coke white. Coke white blazer, that's what I like. Coke white blazer, I'll be high all night. Coke white blazer, that's what I need. Coke white blazer, perfect fit on me. Coke white blazer, that's what I love. Coke white blazer, I'm high on that. Coke white blazer, that's what I need. Coke white blazer, perfect fit on me. I know that I look good, I know I look official. Word around the block is they call me that nigga. Like a baby engineer, it big. Double iron, Tantra, bitch, it big. Blazer looks so good that even when we are sexy, she don't wanna undress me. I sport that thing like ESP in here. I come all your girlfriends. Yeah, I said your girlfriends. Always ask that man, had how are you just, just like it. Hey, look at that on when I'm on. Hey, you can even try it on. Hey, how about only one? Hey, and that was attack of the club. Hey, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you mad. Hey, but y'all can't hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold me back. Go white place, that's what I like. Coke white blazer, My name is Devin Nesta, it's really, it's really no big deal, Coke ladies and gentlemen. White blazer, that's what I it's not a big deal. Coke white blazer, perfect fit on me. What? Coke white blazer, that's what I need. Coke white blazer, perfect fit on me. Coke white blazer, that's what I need. Coke white blazer, that's what I need. Yeah, we're going to do a small song. It ain't over, y'all. Thank <laughs> you. 
The song ain't over? Hey, I got a new EP coming out called Mountain Time. This is another song off it. This is only a preview, don't worry. It's, it's just length of a regular song, don't worry. I'll fuck with y'all, come on. Why am I late everywhere? Probably cause I'm everywhere. Probably cause I'm in the streets. Yunkin, yunkin, yunkin. Why this always wanna know? Where this whole thing gonna go? Girl, I ain't got what you need. Yunkin, yunkin, yunkin. Before I live comfortably, got it. Get to where I want to be, got it. Show the world this who I am, got it. Check your questions, raise your hand. I got things to do, things to move, things to move. Stress to get, sleep to lose. And I can't really slow down. I got fan to make proud. Young king, young king, young king. Always up to something. My say's on my critics. Workaholic, not a critic. Maybe it is sort of self. But baby, I can't help it. Holds my plan like a belt, but I still bring the whooping to whip on myself. And I'm screaming like young king, 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 young king. My name is Dabner Status. It's really no big deal. I believe Danny's gonna come back up. But we also got Megan Dirty about to come up if I got the, the running order correct on the screen. Holla! Hey, tell, tell, telling me this and telling me that. Wow, you say keep once it going. You take me with you, I never go back. Now I got a lesson. Wow, what a way to start the show. That was, that was lit, family. <laughs> Did I say it right? Who am I? <laughs> family, that's how I said it. I'm super white. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of white people in this crowd. Do you guys like the song Jesse's Girl by Rick Springfield? I feel like that's the vibe I'm getting from this crowd. <laughs> you know who doesn't like that song? Jesse. Rick Springfield's, why are you so sad? That was 30 years ago, he's over it. But like, I feel like their friendship was probably pretty awkward for a while after that. Like, Jesse goes over to Rick's house with a cassette tape, like, hey, man, you want to explain what this is about? Rick's like, what are you talking about? He's like, you literally said I'm in love with Jesse's girl, like, 20 times in this song. You guys are, like, really upset about this joke. I, it's, it's like, this probably didn't even happen. Jesse was probably a made-up name. It's okay. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, by that first joke, you can tell that I'm an awkward person. I'm not cool. I have trouble getting through life. So here's the story of me not being cool. Last year for Halloween, I went as an army ranger, and I had like the jacket, pants, the boots. It was all from the army surplus store. Like it looked like a skinny John Rambo with a baby face and a sports clips haircut. But I slept at my friend's place, so I'm going home the next day. I ended up going to McDonald's wearing the army getup because that was all that I brought. And as I'm filling up my drink, a lady approaches me and thanks me for my service. So at that point, you got two options. Option one, say, no, I'm not in the army. I, this is a Halloween costume. I'm hungover. I'm a piece of shit, which is the correct option. Honesty is the correct option. Or option two is you just lie and say, you're welcome. I chose none of those options. Instead, when she thanked me for my service, what I said was, hey, what? That doesn't even make sense. Thank you for your service. Hey. And then I got a Fanta, and that was the end of the interaction. I am, I'm a sensitive person. I'm so sensitive that I killed a tiny lizard over three years ago, and I still think about it regularly. Like, I didn't want to kill it. I was on a family vacation, and my sisters were all freaking out, and they were like, my dad was like, well, let's have Danny kill it. I was like, oh, shit. But I had to do it to prove myself as a man. You don't have a lot of options to do that in modern society. Before that, the most I had ever protected my family was when I installed antivirus software on a computer. So it was a big deal. But I tried to back out. So I had told my family to raise their hand if they wanted it to die. And then they all did. I felt like Pontius Pilate asking if the people wanted to free Jesus or Barabbas. Five, like, giggles from the Catholic school kids in the crowd for that joke. Uh, I um, recently moved in with my girlfriend. 
Oh, no, like a few owls and no claps. <laughs> Come on, guys. We're going to need your support for, like, it's fine if you don't want to cheer for some of these, but for the rest of the comedians, let's get that energy up. Let's get it going. We got a great lineup tonight, so we got to get that energy going. Uh, but, no, we did just move in together. What I didn't know when we moved into our place was that we were moving into a gay neighborhood, which it had some unintended consequences. Like, one thing that I've noticed since moving in is that I can no longer get a cheap haircut. Gay men are very fashionable, and it's driving the price up. Like, every haircut costs, like, 50 bucks now because you can't just get, like, a haircut. Like, they give you so much unnecessary stuff. Like, first you got to get your haircut, and then they shampoo it, and they give you hair gel, and they give you ecstasy and a Pomeranian. <laughs> it's just so much. God. Like, and I went to this place called Strands and Trends to get my hair cut. And, like, the dude, like, working the counter looked like Mugatu from Zoolander. Like, all the music was just Rihanna techno remixes. The whole time I'm getting my hair cut to, we found love in a hopeless place. I wish I was getting my hair cut in a hopeless place. It would have been way cheaper. Like, I'm used to getting my hair cut at sports clips, which they just give you, like, the base package. Like, it's not going to be anything special. It's just going to be shorter. It's like the type of, it's the type of haircut that's not going to get you laid. Like, I think instead of sports clips, they should call it, I hope you're good at sports clips. You're going to need to have something else going for you. <laughs> I, uh, I started taking an acting class recently. So it's hard. It's hard for me because I'm normally, like, very laid back in my daily life. I don't have a lot of highs or lows. So to try and break out of that and get better at acting, I've just been overreacting to everything in my daily life. The other day, my girlfriend was like, I can't find my white shirt anywhere. And I was like, what? What are you going to wear instead? The blue shirt? You've worn that twice already this week. She was like, oh, my God, calm down. Like, the neighbors are going to hear you. I hope they hear me. No, I'll go tell them about this. So I went to my neighbor's house and knocked on his door. I was like, hey, man, Basha can't find her white shirt. But this guy's in my acting class, too. So he's like, what? Fuck that. He smashed a vase. What is she going to wear, the blue shirt? Does she have any other shirts? <laughs> so I went to Catholic school, which might explain all of what's going on here. <laughs> but they try and lie to you in Catholic school. Like, they try and tell you these things that can't possibly be true. Like, that Noah got, like, two of every animal on an ark. Or that, like, the world was created in seven days. Or Jesus was white. You may have seen the pictures. They're trying to act like Jesus was a white guy. But he was born in the Middle East, so he at least had a tan. Like, you know Jesus wasn't white because Joseph would have freaked out. He already had to get over the whole she got pregnant on her own thing. If that baby would have came out a different race, it would have been game over. He would have been like, what the hell, Mary? What about that trip to Europe you took nine months ago? She's like, I was just trying to find myself. <laughs> oh, Really? Well, it looks like you found some sperm instead, little Miss Immaculate Conception. She's like, Joseph, calm down. Just enjoy all the gold and frankincense and myrrh. That's another thing I want to talk about. How come the second you're not pregnant anymore, a bunch of guys I don't know show up giving you gifts? This is all very suspicious. She's like, Joseph, calm down. It wasn't even awkward. It was so awkward. I asked those three wise men, how do you know my wife? And all they said was, hey. Do you know how my wife got pregnant? Hey! And then they left. <laughs> Guys, that is all for me right now, but I'm going to get this thing going. We're going to bring up your first comedian. First comedian of the night. She is a producer of this show. She's also a founding member of Team Us Comedy. You can see her. She'll be performing next month in November at the... Whoa. Oh, shit's getting real, you guys. You can see her next month at the Boston Comedy Festival if you're in Boston. <laughs> this next, she's very funny. Guys, give a round of applause for Meg and Dirty. Get the music. Oh, cool, that happened. Okay, hey guys, what's up? Woo! I'm so excited to be here. Is everyone having fun? Did everyone get, did you guys get the drink tickets? Very important, get the drink tickets. Find Tyler if you haven't. Um, so I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with the news. Um, there's a lot of violence going on right now in the country I'm from. I'm from America. Um, 
from Washington, D.C., if you've heard of that. Um, you guys, Halloween's coming up, and I'm, like, so excited. I love Halloween, but I hate haunted houses. Like, I don't, I don't get the concept. Like, why would I pay someone to make me miserable? It doesn't, I'm already paying Comcast. Like, I'm doing that already. If I wanted to be terrified, I could just walk around Chicago. Just do that for free. Um, you know, haunted houses were definitely invented by white dudes. And here's why. Uh, white dudes felt so safe in real life. They had to invent a place where they felt like vaguely in danger. What would that be like? What? To everybody else, like life is already a haunted house. We're like, boo, it's a cop. Like, boo, it's a creepy dude. Like, boo, it's a dick against your butt. How'd it get there? <laughs> Every time, you guys. Um, I feel like there's like a lot of PDA in Chicago. Like last week, I saw a guy jacking off on the blue line. It's a lot of public affection for himself. Um, it's true, uh, I did see that. Just top dating the blue line, guys, it's a PSA. Um, so some, w recently, one of my guy friends, he was telling me like, oh my God, Meg, like I like found this guy, girl, girl, uh, who loves to have sex. Like she loves to have sex, can you believe it? And I was like, yeah, like I can believe To me, it's always like funny when guys are surprised that women like to have sex. Like, of course we do. Do you realize every time a girl goes home with you, she wants to do it so badly, she's willing to risk her life to do it? Like, hashtag do it for the D. Like, that's what's happening. Um, so you guys, I like to live by a saying. Uh, it's choose a career you love, and you will never work a day in your life, right? Like, you never will. And I don't, because I don't have a job. Um, I recently left my job because I was asked to. They were like, I was like oh, cool. They are like, you're fired. And I was like, oh, no. Um, I've, had, I've had a job since I was 16. So this was like, I was like in a very protected pu bubble for like a long time. So like freaked out. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to like deal with it. So I listened to like Fix You by Coldplay 20 times. Uh, and then I felt like even worse because I realized on top of being laid off, I also had trash taste in music. Like learned a lot about myself. It was hard. It was hard, you guys. And like friends started giving me adv advice. You know, they were like, hey, like Meg, the key is to do something every day, like make a to-do list so you like feel accomplished. So I started to make a list, but eventually it like started getting shorter. Like eventually it was just like one, leave the bed, two, or don't, you don't have a job, who cares? <laughs> you guys, it was crazy. Like for the first time in my life, I, I didn't give a fuck. And if you like look in the mirror and say, I don't give a fuck three times in a row, Kanye West appears and he high fives you. It's pretty great. I highly recommend it. I just didn't, I like had so much free time that I didn't know what to do with. So I like did, you know, did all like the typical things. I like traveled, I like went out and drank a lot. I carried around a bag with like 40 bananas in it just so I could like drop it in public places and watch people's reactions. When the bananas filled out, they're like, what's the story behind the bananas? Um, it was great. I was like, this year for Lent, I'm giving up. Like I just calling it quits. <laughs> Oh man, what, I cannot s even see. Uh, okay, so my new goal in life, uh, I, I have a job now, so I have a new goal in life. Um, uh, my new goal is to be more of a hoe. I'm trying to be, thank you guys, strong supporters here. But I'm like not good at it. Like I don't, I don't, like the first time I tried to be a hoe, I like got out of a serious relationship and I decided I was gonna have my first one night stand. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna have my first one night stand. So I went to a party and I Googled how to have a one night stand. Uh, I found a WikiHow article. It had like 10 steps to a one night stand. And like the 10th step was to have sex. Like you would forget. Just get so caught up in steps one through nine. Uh, but I was like nervous to do it because I feel like I have a very like girl next door kind of vibe. Like I smile, I wear cardigans. I look like someone who's gonna offer you gum. Like, I, like I'll watch your laptop if you're in the bathroom. Like I'll do that for you. Uh, finally, but like turns out you like don't need to flirt with dudes to have sex with them. Like you just have to be a person and not a pile of trash. And they'll do it. Uh, he was like, you want to get out of here? And I was like, oh, I know what this means. I just read a thesis about it. I'm so excited. Um, it was a terrible decision though, but I feel like behind every like terrible decision is like a friend that's like, go for it. This is a great decision. You are amazing. Josh doesn't even know. Um, Who's next? So I am single now, I'm single. Uh, I'm single and ready to have a healthy relationship. Um, if I had to describe my love life, it would be like an M. Night Shyamalan movie. Like a lot of twists and turns, but still fucking disappointing. Um, it is, every time. <laughs> Everyone knows that reference, that's so sad. Um, the first guy I ever dated in high school ended up being gay. 
And like, I knew he was gay because we were getting ready for a party, and he was like, Meg, I'm gay. I was like, oh, that makes sense. It makes sense. Um, uh, so I haven't always been the strong six that I am now. Um, it took me a while to get here. I was this, I was this thing called ugly duckling syndrome, which is like when you grow up looking like the before picture of a proactive commercial. Um, I, we would play tag and no one would tag me. I'd be like, what? That's not how this game works. Um, I was so confused. And I'm Indian, so I like grew up with like more hair than white girls. My mom would let me like shave. She didn't think I was like ready for it yet. So I got to go to homecoming with like a light mustache. Uh, better yet, my date couldn't grow one. He was like, you got any tips? Like how did you get it to come in so thick? I look like Jack Black from Nacho Libre. Uh, he looked like Ellen. Um, we were super cute together. We were so cute together. We did go to Indian second base, which is just like a high five. Um, first base is eye contact. First base is eye contact. Uh, God, dating is hard, you guys. Like, I wish like we could date like our ancestors who could like cross the street and marry one of the five people they knew. Like, oh well, Betsy isn't my cousin, and she doesn't have the plague. Two out of two, but I lock this shit down. Like, that's it. Like, all the good ones had the plague back in the days. Um, I feel like the older you get, the more you hate the current generation. You know, like, I feel like ghosts wander around like, what a time not to be alive. Like, you guys are fucked with this election. Fuck. Um, God, they would, like, old people always say the same thing. Like, oh, man, like, life was so much simpler back in the day when, like, we didn't have phones or, like, texting. Like, well, like, you also didn't have openly gay people or the vote. So you win some and lose some, Grandma. <laughs> bitch like <laughs> it's me going uh so i did i grew up with super conservative indian parents uh who never talked to me about like sex or reproductive health so i grew up thinking menopause was like a pokemon um that's what i thought for like a long time found out the hard way no i didn't I'm not. um i feel like parents are like in general afraid to talk about uncomfortable things with their children like i know something common that they're afraid to talk about is like gay marriage like they're afraid to explain it to children. But I feel like we've explained more complicated things to children. Like, we've explained divorce and, like, death and, like, long division. Like, that shit was hard. If you can explain long division, you can explain gay marriage to kids, you know? To, like, the most gullible audience, too. Like, kids will believe anything. You tell them the moon is made of cheese, they're like, yeah, that checks out, mom. That totally works. Checked it out. And uh, I, it's more proof for that is uh, I used to think Oreos would make me blow up when I was a kid. Uh, here's why I'll explain uh, my mom was a huge liar. That's the short version of that story. I used to be addicted to Oreos. Like I would have like two, three, like 12 sleeves a day. Uh, snacking for me was like the Fast and Furious franchise, like like three parts and like 12 more unnecessary parts after I should have already stopped. I just kept going. Naturally I gained a lot of weight, but I was like 10, I wasn't trying to be a hoe yet, so I didn't care. Uh, but my mom convinced my uncle, who's a doctor, obviously, um, to tell me to tell me that uh, if I kept eating Oreos that I would like blow up, like I would just explode. And I like totally bought into it. It took me like three seconds and I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna blow up. I was like, I lived in a constant state of panic. I was like, holy shit, like, does this apply to other cookies? What about crackers? What about the entire snack aisle? I need answers, mom. Uh, at that point, if my mom had been like, hey, like Meg, like some men like men and some women like women and some like both, I would've been like, that's great. I might blow up though. Like, can we focus on the issue? All right, you guys, that's my time. And Meg, thank you. Stiffed. Guys, keep it going for Meg. That was great. Next comedian coming up. We're very excited to have her here. One of our feature acts tonight. You can see her at the Laugh Factory beginning on November 7th. She's going to be hosting and producing a show there called Afterthoughts. Guys, give a warm welcome for Kristen Fenchek. When we were kids Give it up again for your hosts and for the producers of the show for having us here. Thank you so much. Yes. So, guys, um, my high school reunion was last weekend. Yeah, yeah. Give it up for that. Yes. It was awesome. I had a great time. Mostly because I didn't go, you know. <laughs> I wasn't there. Uh because part of me is like, you know, you go to your high school reunion so you can see what everybody's accomplished, what everyone's up to, you know, shoot the shit, right? But I was like, I only graduated high school five years ago. And the only thing anybody has accomplished in that time frame is having a baby too soon. 
<laughs> I'm not gonna go to congratulate you on that. Cause I'm shitty with kids. Like I was, <laughs> I was out jogging the other day and I saw this little boy with his mom and he was wearing a Superman outfit. And I was like, oh my God, how cute it would it be if I just go up to this kid, act like I think he's a real Superman. It'll make his day. So I go up to the kid and I'm like, oh my God, Superman? I've never seen Superman in real life before. And then he started crying and hid behind his mom. <laughs> And I was like, you know what, I'll salvage this situation, I'll make up for it. So then I leaned down and I was like, hey, kid, kiddo, listen, you know, real superheroes, don't go crying to their mommies, you little bitch. <laughs> so I know you're not a real superhero. Uh, you guys, I was an English major in college, but I'll be the first to admit that I just don't get poetry. <laughs> I'll read a poem about trees and be like, oh, this is a nice poem, just like a super nice poem about how great trees are. And then my professor would be like, ooh, Kristen, actually, this poem is about the atrocities of the Vietnam War <laughs> and American imperialism. And I'd be like, oh. Well, then why didn't the poem just fucking say that, you know? <laughs> There's 24 stanzas, literally all of them mention trees. What am I supposed to extrapolate from this, you know? I feel like it's similar to when a girl is mad at her boyfriend, but she just won't tell him why. And he like sits her down, and he's like, Sarah, for the love of God, just tell me what's wrong. And Sarah's like, um, I'm only gonna speak in similes and metaphors, and then you tell me what's wrong. <laughs> That's what a poem is. <laughs> uh, so guys, uh, I recently graduated from college. Yeah. Oh my God, thank you so much. It's not going well. Uh, <laughs> My parents are trying to be encouraging. They're like, well, you know, Kristen, if all else fails, you can just, like, settle down with a rich boy and marry him. But that pisses me off because it's 2016 and I'm a feminist. Like, why should I have to marry a rich dude to be successful? Like, can't I just rob one? <laughs> take a man's last name. Sure, I'll take his last name, but then I'll take his first name, too. I'll steal his identity and I'll drain his bank account. <laughs> Why would I have to commit to him? Another thing I can't stand about dudes is like, they always want to tell you what the difference between men and women is, but they're always wrong. <laughs> they're like, yeah, the difference between men and women is that women are just crazy. And men are like these super rational, emotionally intelligent human beings that would never carry out a mass shooting. Um, <laughs> And I'm like, nah, dude, I figured out. I know what the difference is. Okay, here it is. The difference between men and women is that men only have to worry about being kidnapped when they're little, but women worry about it the entire time that they're alive. <laughs> like, forever, do you get it? Like, when a dude hits age 12, he may as well be like, fucking sweet, I'm in the clear, <laughs> you know? But then a 45-year-old woman goes to Target, and she's snatched from the parking lot, and she's never seen or heard from again. And the police are like, hmm. Yeah, that sounds about right. You know, <laughs> like, I watch a shitload of Dateline, you guys. <laughs> I've never seen an episode of Dateline in with, hey, so we found Rebecca, and she was, like, totally okay. You know, <laughs> that just doesn't happen. The other thing is, like, I don't even know what you want with a middle-aged woman. Like, what do you do with one of those once you get one? <laughs> like, if, if somebody kidnapped my mom and threw her in the back of a van, she'd still try to be a backseat driver. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper, you're going 35 and a 25. <laughs> it's a school zone, okay? <laughs> uh, so recently I was um, having a conversation with people I was just meeting for the first time. And uh, I sat down because there were chairs and I wanted to sit and I thought that would be chill. But um, everybody else kept standing. And then five minutes into the conversation, one of the girls looks at me and says, you know, sitting is a pretty bold power move to make considering the rest of us are standing for this conversation right now. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't know sitting was a power move. If that's the case, then my mom is the queen of power moves. Because she's in a wheelchair, so. Not only is that bitch making power moves 24 7, 365, but she's gonna ask you to push her around to Michael's <laughs> on a Sunday. What a diva. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been like, Mom, 
We have company. Can you stand up for like two seconds? <laughs> You're intimidating all of our guests. A little bit more about my mom. She has something similar to Parkinson's. It's a disease that affects all of her motor skills and her coordination, so she can't talk very well or move very well. And um, I kind of hate it when people find out that she's disabled because then I think people act like I need to coddle her or treat her differently. And what people need to understand is that people with disabilities are still people, you know? Like, they're very... They have their own thoughts and emotions and feelings, and they're smart. Like, I don't need to treat her like she's a baby. And the way I see it is that just because her legs don't work, it doesn't mean her mouth sure doesn't, you know? <laughs> she's annoying is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Like, you know when you lose one sense and it heightens another? <laughs> like how a blind person might hear really well. Like, the second her legs came out, she just started nagging everybody. <laughs> but I don't want you guys to think I'm going to come up here and shit on my mom. You know, like, on the real, my mom is my best friend. She's my ride or die. Like, she is the one person on this planet I would do anything for, you know? Because, like, in my heart, I know she is the one human being on this earth that would drop everything for me. Like, literally, because she can't hold shit without dropping it, you know? <laughs> She's disabled, you guys. <laughs> Another thing that happens with my mom is, like, people will see us out in public, and they'll see me, like, pushing her in her wheelchair, and they'll, like, come up to me and be like, you know, I just wanted to say, like, I saw you taking care of your mom. I just want to let you know that's, like, really sweet. And it's, like, just really nice to see a kid taking care of their mom like that. And I'm like, yeah. Like, I love taking care of a woman in her 50s that writes bad Star Trek fan fiction, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> like that's, like, a 20-year-old taking care of their mom isn't cute. It's a tragedy. You know what I mean? Like, if it were up to me, like, old people would be exclusively taking care of other old people, like, very inexpertly and very poorly. You know, because, like, they had a ceremony, and they got married, and they were in love, you know? Like, I didn't get to fuck my mom for 40 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if I am wiping your ass and helping you take a shower, I better have fucked you for decades, <laughs> you know? I don't know. I'm, okay, like, listen, gross. Like, I'm not saying I want to fuck my mom. That's disgusting. She's disabled. You guys are sick. <laughs> Um, I've been seeing this older guy in his 30s recently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and the thing that sucked about him, though, was, like, it's been great, but I feel like he was a little bit too impressed by me on our first date. You know what I mean? He just kept saying, wow, you're only 23? I can't believe it. You're not like most 23-year-olds. Um, but I sure showed him when I forgot my wallet at the bar and threw up over my front door. <laughs> But I was like, whatever, that's fine. Uh, he saw my true colors on the first date. Good thing I got it out of the way. But then he called me the next day, and he was like, hey, Kristen, I had a great time last night. The 30 minutes you were sober were actually awesome. <laughs> so then I was like, what the fuck? Like, there's something wrong with this dude, right? So I do as one does, and I decided to creep on his Facebook. And I start looking through his photos, and um, I notice he has, like, a lot of pictures with this one really cute girl. So I'm like, oh, my God, this is totally his ex. And... Um, she is, like, the most gorgeous person I've ever seen, right? And she is, like, she's a career. And she has, like, pictures of her and her friends, like, drinking tropical drinks in exotic locations, you know? And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I can't compete with that. But then I did a little bit more digging, and I find out in addition to the fact that she's, like, beautiful and successful and, like, just, like, the most insanely gorgeous person I've ever seen, um, she's also dead. Like, she died, <laughs> tragically, <laughs> unexpectedly. So I was like, whoa, awesome, no competition for me. Um, <laughs> but no, I was like, whatever, I'll squeeze a couple more dates out of this guy. So uh, before we go on another date, I tell my friend, I'm like, hey, Jillian, like this dude, mortgage guy, because she knew who he was. I was like, mortgage guy asked me out on another date, and I did a little bit of Facebook creeping, and I find out like his ex-girlfriend's really pretty. Before I could finish what I was going to say, she goes, oh, please, pull up this bitch's Facebook. I bet you're way hotter than her. And I was like, well, Jillian, she's dead. So I don't really feel comfortable scrutinizing the looks of a dead person. And the thing is, is like, yeah, I am prettier than her now. 
<laughs> when she was alive, she had it on point, folks. <laughs> um, so we go on one more day, we hook up, we go back to his place, and then he like opens up to me and he's like, hey, Kristen, I gotta tell you something. I was like, yeah. And then he was like, you know the photo of that girl on my mantle? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, that's uh, my fiance who passed away three years ago. And I had to act so surprised. <laughs> I was like, what, 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 who, uh, I thought that cute Asian girl was your sister. <laughs> I, uh, but on the real, I realized we weren't going to work out when the next morning he was like, hey, I want to make you breakfast. And I was like, dope, awesome, I love breakfast. And then he was like, what do you prefer, dates or figs? And I was like, dude. <laughs> You're going to have to explain to me what both of those things are. <laughs> all right, that's all I'm going to do, folks. Thank you so much. Yeah. Keep it going for Kristen. I love her power moves that she was doing after jokes. It's so fun. I wish I could do this. I can't. I can't pull it off. Guys, next comedian coming up. His comedy is so lit, family. Guys. It's going to be unreal. He's a producer for this show. He's also a producer of Team Us Comedy. You can see him in a couple weeks at the Laugh Near Middlemost Furniture Showcase. Give a warm round of applause. Welcome to the stage, Tyler Fowler. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money yeah. on my mind. I can never get it. No, I can never be. Yeah. Yeah. Do the reason. Everybody hands go up. Hey, showtime. And they stay there. Yeah. And they stay there. Yeah. Yeah. And they stay there. Yeah. Yeah. I have to keep this hand here the rest of the show. Because they stay there, you guys. Damn. This is the nicest backsplash I've ever performed in front of. Get that shit in my bathroom. That's how you know you made it in comedy. It's the backsplash. What's up, guys? My name is Tyler. I'm super excited to be here. Um, I just got back from performing at a comedy festival up in New York. Um, and I got to tell you guys, uh, when I was invited to perform in this festival, I felt like I had really made it in comedy. So I promptly put myself in check by booking a Greyhound bus ticket to get there. <laughs> yeah. I flew into Washington, D.C. for a show, and then I took a 12-hour bus journey up to Ithaca, New York. That was only about a six-hour drive, but on Greyhound time, you double the driving time and add in one communicable disease, right? <laughs> yeah, that was cool. But after my show in D.C., I was, uh, I was changing in the bathroom at the Greyhound station. Uh, and some of you are probably thinking, Tyler, that must have been so embarrassing, being the only person in that bathroom not shooting heroin. <laughs> and I would ask you to please not make any assumptions about my sobriety, okay? I had a long bus ride ahead of me, okay? I'd try some needle drugs, okay? We're doing it. No, but I'm excited to be back in Chicago. I love the city. Uh, one of my favorite things about Chicago recently uh, is Lollapalooza. Yeah, fucking cool, right? Everyone, agreeable thing. No, Lollapalooza, there's a lot of people uh, who don't like Lollapalooza because of all the traffic. They say it's too loud and too messy. Me, on the other hand, I love Lollapalooza because that's one weekend a year. It's fully acceptable for me to roll face on psychedelic drugs with a bunch of high school kids. Hell yeah. What? Welcome to the cool kids table, Tyler. Fuck yeah. Bah, turned down for what? Uh. Guys, I have been drinking a ton lately. Make some noise for substance abuse. Yeah! When I say drinking, you say problem. Drink it! Problem. Drink it! Problem. When I say cry for, you say help. Cry for! Help. Cry for! Help. When I say chugging, you say Listerine. Chug it! Listerine. Chug it! Listerine. Oh my god, you guys are so supportive! Ugh! Who needs my sponsor? Fuck it! Oh, you guys are the best, man. Uh, people say you know you have a drinking problem uh, when your behavior becomes reckless when you're intoxicated. I gotta tell you guys I'm not proud of it, but when I'm drunk, Nine times out of ten, I'm going straight to bed without brushing my teeth. <laughs> I'm not talking so drunk you totally forget either, man. I'm walking right past my bathroom mirror. I look gingivitis right in the eyes. Like, bring it on, motherfucker. <laughs> Just go on with my reckless life, you guys. Fucked up. Uh, man. You guys are probably scared. It's like halfway through the show, and you're like, where is the poignant social commentary about the death penalty? Well, buckle in, folks. <laughs> no, it's weird. There are people out there who honestly think uh, that states who still execute death or inmates using an electric chair are, like, behind the times or particularly heinous. Um, when really what's irresponsible is states who still use a gas chamber. 
Because fossil fuels are now a renewable resource, you guys. The electric chair is just eco-friendly, right? Texas is like the Tesla of states that have capital punishment, right? Not a fan of, of, of electric cars in the house. Okay, yeah, that did not. Dude, these fucking death row jokes usually kill, man. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, one thing I do appreciate about America, though, is that we, like, acknowledge the fact uh, that it's pretty barbaric and fucked up to sentence someone to death. So, like, before we do it, we, like, let you eat whatever you want first, right? <laughs> like, we try and be, like, a, a parent who's, like, trying really too hard to be cool. We're like, you're still in big trouble, young lady. But who wants ice cream and lobster? <laughs> At least, like, when you, you give a death row inmate, like, the dignity of selecting what they like to have for their last meal, no one has to feel guilty. Right? About those calories! Am I right? He could have had grilled chicken and hummus. Instead, he wanted six double-down sandwiches from KFC. You know the sandwich where instead of a bun, it's two fried chicken patties? Also known as the death row of chicken sandwiches. Yeah, you guys are with me. It's that kind of crowd. Cool. Uh, it's that kind of crowd. Mm. Um, so I was raised Catholic, um, but I wouldn't necessarily consider myself Catholic now, uh, but mostly because I fear commitment. Uh, but when it comes to commitment, Catholics don't beat around the burning bush, man. They actually aspire to spend eternity in heaven. That sounds like a lot, right? But like at the same time, I couldn't imagine being fully atheist either because I, I don't think I could spend eternity in a hot topic, you know? Like after a while, the same four Nirvana songs are getting a little old, right? <laughs> like even Kurt Cobain's like, damn, I killed myself to get away from this. That's where we're drawing the line is Kurt Cobain, really. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but Kurt, look at our wall of graphic tees. That is the deepest cut on hot topic I could do, you guys. Show me a comic in the game right now who's doing better Hot Topic jokes. I'll quit for life. Fuck it. Don't hold me to that. They're probably out there, and they're way better. Um, no, I was raised Catholic, and there's a lot of shit I don't understand about Catholicism. Uh, for example, Good Friday uh, commemorates the day that Jesus died on the cross to forgive the sins of all mankind, right? And it's a holiday that is reverently celebrated with a half day off work, right? Like, dead Lord and Savior is kind of a fucked up reason to start the weekend early, right? But it's true, most companies like send their employees home before noon on Good Friday, which I've never been able to wrap my head around being from Chicago, because if we had a half day off work for every senseless public murder, Chicagoans would have a three day work week year round, <laughs> right? Damn, that got real as fuck, you guys. We just discovered that together. We can cry after, we can cry right now if y'all want. Um, the, the other thing I really don't get about Catholicism is uh, Good Friday, Catholics do this thing where they don't eat all day. They call it fasting, uh, or as I like to call it, evangelical anorexia, right? <laughs> because everyone knows you only need to go to church one day a week to maintain a good relationship with the Lord, but you need to maintain a diet all seven days a week if you're trying to maintain that body of Christ, right? Homeboy was cut. Christ looked good, man. That's why they keep those sexy pinup photos of him in every church, right? Homeboy look good, man. Talk about some divine intervention right there. That shit makes me want to join CrossFit. It's like I can hear my trainer now. He's like, Tyler, I want you to carry this wooden cross on your shoulder all day. I want to see three collapse and backups. Let's go. Your muscles will deny you three times before this exercise is over. Uh, so that last joke was riddled with biblical references. <laughs> um, so if you didn't get it, uh, don't worry. That probably just means you had proper sex education growing up. <laughs> Guys, my name is Tyler Fowler. It's all for me. Give it up for Danny Kirshner! <laughs> Keep it going for Tyler! <laughs> yeah, I love how Tyler just... He can make anything interesting and funny by just yelling about mundane things. <laughs> just like, I was parallel parking and then I put on my hazard lights. What? <laughs> Love it. All right. Here we are. Guys, did you have a good time tonight? <laughs> yes. If you had fun, we're going to be putting on another show here. It's going to be a monthly show. So the first Friday of November, November 4th, we'll be back with the second volume of the Bad People Good Comedy Showcase. Keep it going for all the comedians you heard tonight.
If you haven't used your drink ticket yet, use your drink ticket and have a great night. <laughs>